Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while uh, since I've done one of these, but finally time to bring out another Celtic transfer talk video. It's been a little bit since the last one. Um, I can't actually remember when I've done the last one. There's been a little bit of slowed down, you know, kind of progress in the transfer market. We've we've done our big business. We signed Edward. We spent the £9 million. Um, but it's been slowed down since. So, finally, getting to make another one. This one brought to you by CeltsAreHere.com. Top line in the description, make sure to go and check out the site. So, you know, this video is mostly going to be focused on outs because Celtic could be in for a little bit of a windfall, if you like, when it comes to this summer transfer window. There is interest in many players and some, you know, in, in Celtic's, you know, Celtic's way, um, this is a lot of money. In Celtic terms, that's the word I was looking for. This could be a lot of money this summer coming in to the club. So, I mean, there could be outs, there could be ins. We're slowing on the ins. We're, so, we're definitely slowing on the ins um, since we've signed Edward. And I hope that Peter Lowell doesn't stop here. I hope he doesn't spend this nine million and go, right, that's it. Because for Europe, we still improve. We need improvement. We still need to do that. We need to improve. And without the investment, it's not going to happen. But... Something that may kind of kickstart Peter Law into investment is maybe the departure of some players. So the first one I talk about, and um, there's been a couple of rumours floating about recently, and I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts to all on whether or not I would sell them, keep them, etc. The first player, Dedrick Boyata, who has apparently been watched by a few teams in Italy, mainly Lazio, and they're ready to spend quite a decent amount. For Dedrick Boyata, they're in the region of five to seven million pounds. They're talking here. They're ready to bid. Boyata is a player who has just started for Belgium at the World Cup, kept a clean sheet. I didn't personally watch the whole game, so I can't comment specifically on his performance. But they kept a clean sheet at the end of the day in the first game. So I mean, that is a, a very good sign. Very good sign because he was one of the starting centre halves. You know, it, was, it took me by surprise. I did not expect him to start the game, but he did. And uh, he has been generating interest over the summer. And Lazio may be now willing to go and cash in on signing Dedrick Boyata. Now, Celtic now have the situation of going right. Our centre back positions is weak. We don't have too many players of too much quality. But five to seven million pounds for Dedrick Boyata, I think it would be nonsense to turn that down. Absolute nonsense to turn that down. Because he's a player who I'm going to admit I've been harsh on. I think he has got quality. He has. There's no denying that. He has showed it at times throughout the season. He's been solid. He's been our best centre-back at points. And in some games, you know, you sit there and you go, he's actually quite good. But there's been too many times where he's just looked dodgy. He's looked far too dodgy. He's cost us goals. He's been a kind of like F.A. Ambrose in a way where we know he can have a solid game, but he has got that dodgy side to him. They can make a mistake. And to me, I think £5 to £7 million pounds is kill overstepping that a little bit. I don't think he's personally worth that. So, I mean, if we were offered a fee in that region, I'd take it in a heartbeat. Because we're talking here of signing uh, a Swiss international, Fabian Shaw, who you've probably heard of another man who's starting at the World Cup for Switzerland for a fee of £3.5 million. And if you ask me, Fabian Shaw could come in and be a better defender at Celtic than Dedrick Boyata. Granted, if Boyata goes, I think we need to sign two centre-backs after that, because right now we need to bring in another one. But if he goes, then I think that would take it up to two, maybe even three, that we need to potentially look at. But Fabian Shaw, for a release clause of £3.5 million, use the £3.5 million from the 5 to £7 million of Boyata, and we're sorted in one replacement there. More than sorted. I would happily take Fabian Shaw at Celtic. No denying that. I think he'd be a fantastic player. He's experienced, played in the Champions League, played in the World Cup. He's played in the biggest of stages. And I think he's got a lot of physicality. He's getting a big, tall guy. He could be really good. And sorry for the hammering at the back. I can't do much about that. Um, I think it'd be stupid to turn down a region of uh, a fee of the region of five to seven million pounds. I mean, I do think I've been harsh on Bayata, and he has got quality to his game. But for that amount of money, I think we'd have to seriously look into taking it. Uh, and I feel like it could benefit us massively, especially if Wall is going to be kind of anxious towards spending money after spending so big on Odds on Edward because this would probably give him that kind of reassurance to go and spend money with money like that coming in. So Bayata could potentially be off, see how the rest of his World Cup goes. I mean, all it takes for him is to make one massive mistake and then Lazio might just drop all interest, in all honesty. Um, but whether he stays or goes, um, I, I'm not too bothered because I, I think he is a good defender and we need the depth at the back. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we can get better. And uh, for a fee like that, we, I think we should maybe consider it. Uh, the second player to talk about is Stuart Armstrong, who clearly 
should be on his way out of the club, probably, because I don't think he's going to extend his contract. And that's not me being negative or bad-mouthing Stuart Armstrong when I say should be on his way out of the club. I don't mean it in that way, but he made his intentions clear when he signed that very short-term deal that he didn't see his future, his long-term future at Celtic. And quite rightfully so, in a sense. You know, you, you want to progress with your career. You want to head down south and play in the Premier League. Right, understandable. But he never really, you know, gave the fans what they kind of wanted when he said, I'll sign a year extension. Uh, we'll get in the exact same position this time next year. Let's do that. Um, so I think we're at a point where we need to cash in because I don't think he wants to re-sign with us again. I think himself believes that he has came to Celtic. He's done all he can. He's won an invincible treble. He's won, you know, what, three or four league titles in a row. Um, he's played in the Champions League. He's played in the Europa League. Got to the knockout stages. He's done all he can, I think. In his mind, that's what he'll think. And he wants to take his career elsewhere. He's not going to re-sign an extension, I don't think, personally. Could take us by surprise and do it. He could sign an extension. But if he doesn't, and he's made that perfectly clear to the management, to Brendan Rodgers, that he doesn't want to stay at Celtic past this season, then I think it'd be more than stupid. And I think, you'd more, I think the majority of you watching would agree it'd be very stupid not to sell him. Because we're looking at a player who could easily get £5 million for, I'd think. And there's interest from clubs like Norwich, clubs like clubs like Crystal Palace you know sell them just get rid of them bring in a player like John McGinn to replace them I know they're two kind of different players but we have got a lot of depth in that area of the park in the central midfield we've got in Cham we've got Brown uh, I know that's me just named two and I fucking forgot the rest of them. we've got McGregor we've got good players that can play in here Kuasi I believe we've got good depth and we can still bring in a player like John McGinn to replace Stuart Armstrong or anybody else we've got Ryan Christie also coming back from loan who's a more attacking midfielder like Armstrong so we have got depth in that area and for £5 million I'd rather take that money now and lose a player of great quality like Stuart Armstrong than rather lose him for free next season when this year what's he going to add really after last season he, he didn't look too great he did not look great last season he, he was fluttering in and out of fitness and in and out of the first team he wasn't a constant starter um, will that be the same next season I suspect it will be because I think Brendan Rodgers sees a lot more faith in a lot more of the players in the squad so I would rather lose him now for some sort of fee whether that be two, three, four, five million pounds uh, than losing a free transfer and then we don't benefit whatsoever from it, from it because I don't think he's going to do too much this year that will make us go, thank God we never sold him, now you can go. I don't think he's going to have that sort of impact on the team this season. So, in all honesty, unless he's going to sign a new deal, I would, if I was Brendan Rodgers, I'd be transfer listening him. I'd be saying, right, on you go, Stuart, just go, advance your career, take it elsewhere because you, you need players who are going to be playing for the badge every week. They're going to want to be at the club. They want to be here for as long as they can see in their mind. Not someone who, you know, is ultimately going to just leave at the end of the season and they know they're going to leave at the end of the season, whether that be progressing or, you know, going backwards. I think Stuart Armstrong knows in his mind he wants to leave. Um, I'd cash in on it. I would offer him out to clubs. Uh, and I really like Stuart Armstrong. I've always been a big fan of him. And I've said that time and time again. I really like the guy. And I think he's a quality, quality player. And when he plays his best, he is one of the best members of the team. There's no question about that. But if he's not fully at Celtic, um, I would get rid of him now while we can cash in on it. And finally, the last person to talk about, Mr Dembele. The interest is apparently starting again. There's small. It's nothing big. Honestly, this is what I'm not quite buying into yet. Not buying into. Um... But it could potentially, over the course of the transfer window, kind of rise in, uh, you know, interest and, and uh, relevance. But apparently a couple of English teams looking at him. Crystal Palace was the team I've seen specifically. Ultimately, I wouldn't let Dembele go even though we've signed Edward. And, and I know I'm coming on here and I could be saying that as a biased person and saying that as a biased point of view because you all know how much I, I rate Mr Dembele and you all know how much I think he is the best striker at the club hands down, I'll, I'll say that time and time again, but I think we should keep Edouard and Debbie. I think they'd make a fantastic partnership, I mean ultimately, if clubs came in with a good bid of like, you know, 15, 20 million pounds, then maybe we have to sit back and look honestly and say, right, we need to take that sort of money, we can't knock it back, but we're looking at a transfer market now where James Madison is leaving Norwich City for 22 million pounds to go to Leicester, to me, Mr Debbie is two times the player James Madison is. And yet, we'll get less than £22 million for him if we sold him this summer. So, I, we need to become that more kind of... A better sense of what's happening in the transfer window and actually try and get more money. We've been mugged off for too long. And I don't, we can't let that happen with a player like Mr Dembele. We can't, because he's a player of fantastic potential and quality. Don't let him go this summer, Celtic. Just keep him. One more year. That's all I say. But the rumours are starting to mill there again. 
but we'll see where it goes. I wouldn't expect too much of it. Um, I think he has got another six months and another year at the club, so you know we'll see. But that's just my opinion. But I would keep him if we can. Let me know what you think to all these players. Bayata, uh, Bayata Armstrong, Dembele. Would you take Shard over uh, Dedrick Bayata as well? Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Check out CeltsAreHere.com. And I'll see you all next time.